Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Tuesday, October 6th, 2015, and we're honored to have with us Hemming. Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Hemming. Thank you very much for coming out and uh, playing for us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, could we talk a little bit about photography? So you went to Drexel, and did you intend on doing photography, like when you went to school in the first place? Um, no, actually, it was my second choice major. I applied to three schools, uh, two of them for music industry. Okay. And one was Kutztown University in the middle of nowhere for Undecided. It's like my super backup. Okay. And 
I didn't get into my middle school, like the middle one that I thought I would get into. And I got into Drexel, but for my second choice major, which was photography. Okay. And I didn't want to go to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I knew <laughs> so I Drexel wanted, way, I knew way I wanted, Yeah, I knew I wanted to be in a city. And I was like, well, that's fine. And then I just made friends with all the music industry kids. Sure. And so then what... Uh, like, what does a photography major um, comprise of? Like, are you learning about, I don't know, how to develop film, how to, like, take digital photos, how to uh, edit photos, that kind of stuff? Yeah, or? I mean, the program at Drexel is actually really awesome. I feel like an advocate for that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right on. Uh, just because I personally, a lot of schools just teach you the digital stuff because yeah. that's where you get jobs, which is true. But um, I got to learn how to, like, palladium print and... Mm develop my own film and just all these really old processes and those were the things like classes I really liked the yeah. most which was useless because yeah. I can't <laughs> now get a job yeah. you know palladium <laughs> printing four by five negatives it's <laughs> useless now yeah yeah but at least that's something I mean not only inspirational but something creative you could deal with at that yeah, point yeah right? it was fun it was relaxing and like I don't know I like working with my hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you have a favorite medium now of like, like what camera do you use or, or what do you like to take photos with? Um, I just have a 35 millimeter that I carry around with me a lot. Uh, I have a problem getting the film actually developed mm, though. Sure. <laughs> I yeah. just have just like sits rolls. All the rolls. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't bring one on this tour. Um, also, it's kind of like boxy and heavy, but I just got a new digital that's kind of, I don't know, it's just a point and shoot, but it's okay. you can manually adjust everything. So right. I'm just taking pictures with that now. Do you ever use your phone as well? Like, do you find it that to be a helpful thing? It bothers me so much. Okay, just in, in because what it doesn't way? feel like a camera, and it always <laughs> flops, and I always hit the wrong button, and I'm just bad with it. Yeah. So. Do you think that it's useful that so many people are able to like? I don't know, take photos so easily, or do you think that that kind of waters down the quality overall of photography? I mean, it's cool, but I don't know. It's annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> everybody thinks they're a photographer now. <laughs> of and course. It's, I mean, I don't know how to how to explain it. It's harder because now as a photographer, you have to know how to do video and know how to yeah. do audio recording. Like you have to know so many things to get any kind of job because mm -hmm. now you just spend a couple thousand dollars and anyone can do it. Yeah. In a sense. Uh, do you find people taking photos a lot at your shows, like like in crowds and that They're kind of thing? They're not allowed to, technically. Oh, really? On this On tour, this tour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of, they make an announcement or there's things like no photography or video. Okay. Because I think, I mean, Chris does this every other year. I don't know. He's, you know, I, it would stink if there was just tons of video of it everywhere, yeah. I guess. Okay, it, it would, like, get rid of some of the novelty of it or, like, yeah. the rarity of it? Yeah, and it's kind of, and it gets rid of the intimacy in a way. Sure. If there's just a million phones. Yeah, 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 all, like, flashing out. around. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Well, thanks again for coming out for us. You can uh, roll into your next song when you're ready. Cool. You swallow 
watching Audio Tree Live We're in the studio with Hemming. Could we talk a little bit about the uh, punk scene in Philly specifically? Because I know um, through Omar, I listened to as much Omar as I could find, um, that you were involved in that side of music sort of before this, I suppose. But yeah, how, how like, is it pretty tight knit out there? Yeah. Um, well, we were talking before, Philly is just such a small city. Yeah. So the music scene, especially right now, is just booming and everybody kind of knows each other. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I know a lot of the punk, the bigger punk bands coming out of Philly right now, like Cayetana and the Menzingers are really good friends of mine and, like, roommates and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and um, a lot of them live in South Philly and it's all kind of just together. Everyone's so supportive. Of yeah, everyone. I was going to ask about that. Do you, do you see, like, collaboration versus competition? Like, where, where does it fit? Yeah, there? I, know, I rarely see any kind of competition sure. happening. Everyone is very much just supportive and, you know, uh, just helping each other. I mean, I think Kayatana's big first tour was with the Menzingers, mm -hmm. and those are, you know, they're all friends. And Pup, like we were talking yeah. before. Um, yeah, and like Restorations, I yeah, know, is involved in that I group, too. I think so, too. yeah. And it's just, you know, everyone's old friends, and I'm kind of actually new into that whole crowd. Sure. I've only known them for, like, three years, and a lot of them have known each other for way longer. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, everybody's just super supportive and helpful and stuff. And there's other bands, like War on Drugs is out of Philly. Yeah. I met a couple of those guys. And it's, yeah, everyone's really just trying to help each other out, which is a really cool thing about Philadelphia. Yeah. How does that translate? I mean, uh, well, the War on Drugs is obviously not, like, quite a punk band or anything. Mm. But with the project with Hemming, I mean, it, it doesn't fit maybe on a tour with like Restorations or with Kaitan or something like that. But at the same time, there's an attitude maybe that's similar. Am, am I right in saying that? Um, yeah. I mean, it's not like whispery. Like I have my quiet songs, but it's not yeah. like a whispery sure. kind of, you know, I, I have some power behind my voice. And the I feel like punk music now has sort of drifted from being incredibly political mm -hmm. and like fuck the man oh I don't know if I can it's okay oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> like fuck the man kind of stuff and has gotten more to the emotional personable yeah side because if you listen to Cayetana's lyrics or the Menzinger's lyrics they're like you know about love and love lost and feelings and shit <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um I think we like I think I kind of match in that sense where yeah. it's just kind of a lot of raw emotion it's not you know through a big loud electric guitar yeah but yeah and like you're saying not necessarily whereas punk would have been outward almost like yeah. telling telling other people maybe what to do or kind of that these things should stop it's moved inward possibly. yeah yeah definitely yeah sweet awesome well uh roll into your next one when you're ready You left me hanging by a string Gave the illusion I was flying But I was just suspended in the air Not going anywhere And you left me there You felt just like a breeze Underneath my crumpled wing I dreamt you were the wind But all I did was spin out of control Nothing's what it seems My life's a paper dream About to unfold Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of downtime on tour and you know getting ready to after sound check getting ready to play whatever um when you have a moment to just kind of like veg out if that ever happens what what do you do in that time do you watch like are there shows you watch or music records that you like to play things like that um or do you write or you downtime know? i play guitar a lot I, okay. haven't, I haven't been able to write any lyrics yet just because it's like a different place every every day i kind of need like a standard spot yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah yeah to be comfortable yeah um yeah i explore the cities a lot i'm usually there with the crew at 11 a.m mm -hmm. and i don't really have to sound check till around five so i just kind of walk around and take pictures and i yelp to yeah, see yeah. What, what kind of <laughs> to see what kind of food to eat yeah. <laughs> yeah what have you had that you were really impressed by Jeez, even if it's just like simple i don't even I don't even know. I've been getting steaks a lot. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it's a comfort thing. Okay. Um, Just a big slab of meat. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, I don't, you know, there's, I try and save the buyout money because right. that's, like, the only money I'm getting paid, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, but sometimes, like, when I was in Canada, when we when we played in Vancouver, I got paid in Canadian yeah, toonies loonies or whatever. Or toonies, yeah, yeah, loonies or toonies, mm -hmm. what other crap they're called. <laughs> Funny money. But um and it was like fifty bucks. Mm. And I had to either save it till I go to Toronto or spend it all that yeah. night. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, well, fifty dollars, I'm gonna go to this bar across the street <laughs> and sit down and order like the most expensive thing. Thing on the menu, night. yeah. So I got like a steak covered in shrimp. With like mashed potatoes and green beans, and wow. it was awesome. Was that the first steak? Was that yeah? Like that was your the first one, and then steak? I got another one last <laughs> night. I don't know. I think it's also I don't eat a lot of proteins. It's like snacking. It's a lot of snacking. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. always snacks, but there's never like a hot cooked meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, like a sandwiches. potluck. Yeah, when people have a potluck and everyone just brings sides. Yeah, no one ever brings, like, or sandwiches. Meal. Like I'm sick of sandwiches, <laughs> so I just wanted to like sit down and eat meat and potatoes. Yeah. And I've been doing that. How do you order your steak? Medium rare. Nice. Bloody. <laughs> Are there steak spots uh, back in Philly that you like? Uh, I never get steak. At okay. Night. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's like a weird thing a that just thing. started. <laughs> yeah. Unless they're cheese steaks. You know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But not like a big old slab of steak. Yeah, that is no. interesting. Like just finding something that makes you feel comfortable or makes you maybe just feel like you're eating. Dinner. The, it just yeah, feels dinner. like dinner. Yeah. That's it. And I don't have to like slop it out myself, mm -hmm, you know. It's, mm -hmm. Or like build the sandwich yourself even yeah, and just like get served it's to you. It's just there. It's hot and it's plus I feel like a baller sitting there. Yeah. And like uh. I'll take the steak covered in shrimp, I look, please. Yeah, I look like this like young little ruffian and they always card me and then I'm just like, yeah, I'll take the steak covered in shrimp and a beer, thanks. <laughs> They generally, I feel like, think I'm going to run out on the bill. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> just slap the cast yeah, down, like, right up there. slap it down there. with, like, a <laughs> sweet tip, and I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm going to go open for Chris Cornell now. <laughs> just take one sip of your beer yeah. and walk out. You don't even want the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Sweet. All right. Um, she's on tour, the uh, Higher Truth acoustic tour with Chris Cornell, and a uh, self-titled record is out now, so you can get it, support her out on tour, and get the record, and you can roll into your last one. You're ready. Thanks. Some of my friends have seen me cry Some of my friends can tell when I'm alive Some of my friends will know to be 
Jesus and their whole lives broke And some of my friends live on the edge of their seats As soon as they get somewhere they can't wait to leave And some of my friends told me how to be strong And some of my friends don't know how to be alone And some of my friends I may just to me studio with Hemming. You can get the self-titled record and see her out on tour with Chris Cornell. Thank you very much for performing for us. Thank you for having me. Thanks to awesome people in the studio and sound engineers, camera and lighting crew hooking it up, and viewers, thanks for watching. You can support uh, Candice by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks and send a shot via social media to us or her if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Sweet.